think. Yep, it is recording. I'm looking up in the corner. Well, Mr. Mr. Hickmont's gonna have some editing to do. So, okay, guys. Let's begin, yeah. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, um, where did you grow what's up? The, what's the purpose of this? Is this just to get to know, get to know us, get to know Mr. Lauko? Yeah, get to know you. Get to know me, all right. Um, so fire away, I'll do the best I can, all right? So where'd you grow up? So I grew up in Dearborn, Michigan, which is like uh, the Henry Ford uh, capital there, you know, the Henry Ford Museum, Greenfield Village, all in that area right there is where I grew up. And um, yeah, my, um, my dad grew up in that area and I went to the same high school as my dad, Fortson High School. And um, I think my grandmother was a cook there before my time. So in Dearborn, yep. Yeah. What was your favorite subject in school when you were younger? Oh, wow. My favorite subject in school. Um, that's a really good question. I think I liked like the designing and building classes, which kind of fits, you know? Yeah. They called it engineering back, or, or they didn't call it tech, um, but it was more of a designing and building class, and, and I always enjoyed that, you know? Kind of led into this career. So what made you want to be a teacher like, like that? Yeah, so the teacher thing, right? Why do people go into teaching? That's that's an excellent question. It's really because you like to help people. You know, there's a, why does a, a doctor go into to that practice or, or a nurse or, you know, you, you want to help people. And I wanted, I wanted something where I thought I could make a difference. You know, just when, and I don't know if I am or not, but that's always the goal, to try to make a difference, to try to make it better for somebody else. You definitely don't have all the answers but it is part of it, you know, you, you just want to make So I think teaching is my way of trying to, my little small part of how I can make a difference in this world. I still remember some of my, um, my teachers from way back. I even remember one of my elementary teachers, um, just names just stick in your head and I have certain little snapshots of things that we did in the class and it brings a smile to my face. And, I think about that and I'm like, gosh, I wonder if down the line, when I'm when I'm done with this career, if some of those students will say, oh, I remember Mr. Lauko, he was an okay guy. It may not always be about the teaching, but I think sometimes it's just about how you treat people. And that's kind of my thing. I, I just want people to realize that we're here to help and it's not always just about what's going on in the classroom. I'm gonna have a sip of my, my tea, right? Aren't we supposed to be doing this on a, do you guys have anything in front of you? I mean, where are yeah. you? What do you got, Benji? All right, Benji, let's do one of these right here. Do the clink. Give me the clink, put it up there. All right. All right. Mark. What's your favorite part about teaching? Well, I guess my favorite part about teaching is the kids. You know, here's what happens in this job. It's always different. This year is obviously, you know, totally different, but you can be teaching the same su subject. I've been teaching for, gosh, I think this is like my 34th year, but the kids are always different. So even if your subject, and I'm in an area that's always changing. I mean, we didn't have lasers up until like a couple years ago, and we didn't have a, you know, a, uh, the 3D printers and all this new stuff. So that's changing, but the kids are always different. It's always, anytime I go in front of a class and I get to know different personalities, no two people are the same. And that's kind of cool. That's cool. I mean, we've done some, I've had some classes where we've really bonded and things were just awesome. And some classes that are a little bit bumpy, but it's always different. And that's kind of exciting. All right. Good, yeah, nice. <laughs> if you weren't a teacher, just not a teacher in general, what would you want to be? 
Oh, good question. Like, I know when I was really young, and I still like this stuff, I always told my parents I wanted to be a farmer. You know, I want to be a farmer. I want to be, because I still like the outdoors, and I still plant a little garden, and it's always a constant battle between me and the deer and the squirrels, right? And every time I see, a, you know, like, a squirrel sitting up in my tree eating one of my tomatoes, you know, puts the hair on my neck standing up. But I still like being, like, close to the earth, so to speak. And, um, so it was at one point when I was really young, it was being a farmer and then later it was a fireman. And I actually kind of looked into that because again, that's a profession where you can really make a difference and you can help people. And, um, I don't know. I just, I, I, those were a couple that, that remember the farmer was really, really young. Okay. The other one was before I went to college, it was, um, a fireman. Yeah. So yeah, I can see it like helping people. Yeah. If you didn't teach like engine tech, what subject would you want to teach? You know, I think science is cool because science, you know, you could do so much with it and the experiments and why things are happening. And I, I think there's so many neat areas. My brother was a science teacher in Troy for 37 years. And, you know, I, I had the opportunity to see some of the things that he's done in his lectures and they're fascinating. You know, it's just, I, I just think science is cool. A lot of stuff to do, a lot of stuff to learn. Always have questions about stuff. Um, so science. Uh, so how else do like quarantine affected your o overall day-to-day -day life and also your teaching? Ah, that's a nice question. I guess that's your day-to-day -day life. It is my day-to-day -day life. You know what? It's kind of stressful because I'm a person who likes to know like what I'm doing every single day. I, even if I've been doing this for all these years, I still like to look at lesson plans and I still like to practice and be confident about what I'm going to do when I get in front of the kids. And when this all hit and all of a sudden I'm in Zoom and I mean, if you think about it, seven or eight months ago, I never heard of Zoom. Right? I mean, I didn't hear of that stuff. And now it's like, ah, zoom this and do this and breakout rooms and, you know, the chat. And so it's taken me a while to get a handle on, I guess, even though I'm a so-called technology teacher, I'm not technology in the sense that like IT, where we're dealing with all the computer, it's more the CAD programs and it's more the lasers and some of the manufacturing and the engineering. But the technical aspect of it as far as teaching this way, it's really taken me a while to, to get it. I'm getting better, good support. That's one thing about Derby. We have so much support around us. Working with Mr. Liggett, I mean, it's, it's nice to have someone. It's nice to have not only a colleague, but a friend who helps me and we can bounce ideas and, hey, don't sweat that. Let me show you how to set up that Zoom link. Otherwise, I'm laying awake at night with my eyes wide open thinking, I got to figure this out. Or Mr. Hickman, or some of these people, and anybody in this building. I could go to anybody in this building, and they would do what they could to help me. And that probably has to go with that whole teacher thing, you know? So I guess that's been the hardest thing, is getting, and the reaction. You know, that's another thing. Like when I'm staring at my class, I don't like my class to be totally quiet. I don't want them bouncing off the ceiling, right? But I like to hear voices. I like to hear people talking and I feed off of the enthusiasm of, of, of the students. And when you're just looking at 25 little squares on the screen with the microphone with the red line going through it, and I say something funny, or at least I think it's funny, and everybody just sits there and looks at me, it's like, wow, that's hard. There's no interaction, you know? And I, I feed off of the interaction and that's been, a difficult thing for me. I'm getting better. And I'll even tell the kids, it was funny, unmute yourself and laugh, you know? And, and a couple kids will give me like a goofy grin and I'll take that for right now. So those are some of the things that have been the technology and how to get the lesson and, and connect, but I'm getting better. Yeah, so very unexpected, right? Yeah, yeah, very unexpected. The next what else you got? Hit me up, Benji, how about another sip? Mark, you're going to have to get something, buddy. Thank you. There we go. All right, what do you have? Okay. Do you have any hobbies outside of teaching? 
You know, I actually like like yard work and gardening and stuff like that. I find that relaxing. It kind of goes back to when I was a little kid, right? But I, I like to be outside. I'm, I think I'm one of the few people in my neighborhood that cuts their own grass. And there's a sense of pride when I can do something and plant flowers and trim up a tree or edge my property. And then I kind of look back and I think, wow, that looks pretty nice and it makes me feel good. And it's really a cheap way to feel good. You know, it's a self-satisfaction of doing something. And I'm, I'm doing it for me, you know? And so, yeah, that's, that's probably one of my, my hobbies. I mean, I like to hike and I like nature and um, we, we do a lot of walking. I used to jog, but I'm kind of tapering that back as I get older and my joints hurt more. So now it's more, it's more walking and just being in the outdoors and being around my, my kids and my wife, you know? So I, those are my hobbies, kind of doing things with the family and being outside. And, Taking care. So, pretty simple stuff. So, in quarantine, people often find it difficult to find motivation. So, how how do you do that? Is there any uh, specific way, or or just in general life, not only quarantine? Yeah, I mean, motivation is I have a job to do. Even though I love my job, like I think about when kids are sitting in front of my class, I'm thinking those are somebody's children. So I have like this responsibility, I have to try to effort to do the right thing. And so that's my motivation. It always has been. It's like, what's the right, it doesn't always come out right, but I had a, a teacher, my mentor teacher used to tell me, eh, you know, Pat, he would say, when you put your head to the pillow, you shouldn't have any trouble sleeping if you give it a good day's work or you're really putting yourself out there. So my motivation is I'm responsible for trying to show stuff, trying to listen to people. It's not just about what I teach. Um, and I have to try to do a good job. And I've been really lucky when I look at this facility and, and what we have to offer here and to try to take advantage of it. And what is the best way that I could help you guys say, hey, this stuff's kind of cool this might be something that I want to go into. So motivation comes because you want to do the right thing. And that's not just in teaching, I think that's in life. You know, how do you treat people? What are you supposed to do? Um, it's easy to sit or look the other way. It takes a little bit more effort to go out of the way and help that older person bring the garbage can up or shovel that driveway or whatever it may be. And I'm not the greatest at it, but I try. So it comes from the students comes from the students and I think yep I get it from the students and I think it's also like somewhat how you're built you know what what's intrinsic what's on the inside you know I have parents who were the same way very giving people very caring people and you look at that stuff and it, it makes a difference all right, all right. Mark, what else are we the last question is what is your most memorable a uh, moment at Derby or teaching in general? Oh boy. Um, I have a, 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 I've been fortunate. I have a lot of good memories. Um, I hope to have a few more. Um, I know that, and I, I, you guys may have heard this story if you had me in class, but I know one of the things we were building um, the grippers, the hydraulic grippers. I think I even have one somewhere, but uh, right here. So we were building these things right here, grippers. And there were a group of, I think they were executives from like the Lego company because they wanted a, they were kind of interested in, at that time it was Mr. Butchko and I were working together and they wanted to see what we were doing and how these things worked and about the hydraulics. And so all of these gentlemen were around one of our tables and we're, discussing and showing our kids projects and we were really happy and excited that they were here and i was pushing on this is just filled with water this is all filled with like skunky water right now but and i was pushing on this hose really hard and the hose popped off right so this hose came off and i continued to push and it was like a squirt gun and it shot this stream of water right at this gentleman's, how do I say this nicely? Lower section, all right? 
So I basically sprayed his whole crotch with water and I didn't stop. I just kept saying, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. That was probably like one of the most embarrassing moments and I had no place to go. There was like nothing I could crawl under. If there would have been like a bucket of sand, I probably would have stuck my head in it, right? Nowhere to hide, yeah. Yeah, nowhere to hide. And I, I felt terrible. It was good sport. Everything was good. You know, because, oh, it's okay. I got a coat I'll put on until it dries. But that was like super. And I'm sure there's a few other embarrassing things I've done, but that was right up there. That was right at the tops of embarrassing myself. Um, you know, now I can look back and say, ha, ha, ha. But back then, oh my gosh, I think I probably, sh you know, tra changed every shade of, of white that I, I could be, you know, just all the color drained out of my face. So, um, but yeah, that was kind of memorable. And there've been other things, positive things where people have said nice things and I've gotten letters from kids that have meant a lot to me. A and those are always memorable. When somebody says, hey, Loco, remember me? Thanks, you know, or, or whatever. Those are kind of neat things, you know? You, you don't go into teaching for that, but it's kind of cool. So, um, yeah. What do you think? Are we? All right, yeah, thank uh, you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Awesome. I'm gonna, Benji? One last yeah. of the tea, what are we gonna last do? One. Oh, Mark, every time we do this, Mark is bumming, I can tell. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Mark, could you thank stay you. in the meeting for a second when we're done? Okay, I think you need to end the recording. All right, so let's see.